TRS Clips, the place you arrive at if you just want the best bits of India's smartest podcast, The Ranveer Show. Subscribe, hit that bell icon. Because I started working uh, when I was 11, 12, and then 13 is when I started making the money. And uh, it was already like 2021, uh, having a million dollars in the bank account, not being able to go to sleep. Got me to the striking realization, I need to fix it. Then that was also the time when uh, our company got acquired by Endurance International. When I got it wasn't the, Fathis company. Yeah, Fathis company uh, got acquired by Endurance International. Uh, I was in the leadership team, was instrumental in positioning the business for acquisition. Uh, had worked with the whole leadership team in speaking to potential buyers. I was the head of marketing and strategy in the business. I executed like tens of hundreds of projects, managed a large team and delivered significant value in uh, improving their profitability. So uh, uh, once we sold it, I had the money in the bank account, but I was not in control. Uh, random thoughts, fear, high levels of stress, lack of health, right? I had to fix it. And uh, after two months of reading Swami Vivekananda and connecting back to yoga, and reaching out to my gurus and understanding the power of breath work meditation. I went on a trip to Bali. Hold on, brother. Why did you mention Swami Vivekananda? Swami Vivekananda for me was always somebody I looked up to. From the quotes that I read like, arise, awake and stop not uh, until you make it happen, right? So uh, uh, he has gone to the US, made his mark, started ashrams, institutions uh, worldwide. I'm within getting a, goosebumps as you. Yeah, within a short period of time uh, that he lived, that also before 120 years. And the level of intellect and the intelligence that was showcased in his speeches, the thought and what he manifested in those days without any resources was phenomenal and magnificent. Sort of a Nawal Ravikant figure of that time in a more spiritual way. Yeah, in, definitely. Uh, see, until then, my thought process about spirituality, I was an atheist. Okay. And then I became agnostic. I was like, see, you cannot disprove the existence of God. More Warren Buffett style, right? And then when I read Vivekananda, I was like, oh man, being spiritual does not mean doing nothing. Being spiritual means doing every single thing possible. Right? To the best like, of your capabilities. Yes, to the best of your capabilities, non-stop. You take any number of people. Then I started reading about Chinmayananda, Sachidananda, Dayananda Saraswati, and the any number of gurus who went from here to the West and Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. And in the new age, uh, you could take Sri Sri Ravi Shankar and uh, Sadhguru. Any number of people who have made their mark have worked non-stop. In the US, they are heavily recognized. And uh, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, they would go to jails. Even now they continue to do so in running their programs of yoga for the inmates. And governments, cities, and these prisons have seen 60 to 90% reduction in crime after they would go through this program. Can you believe that? And every state has granted him citizenship, all kinds of honorary awards, this and that and what not, which is why in the US, all of these gurus are greatly respected now, right? I read a lot of them. Then I went on a trip to Bali for self exploration. And I wanted to take a couple of weeks of break from everything I was doing and look within, understand what was going wrong. And that's when I also quit eating meat. I physically observed in one of the meditation sessions uh, of the day when I had chicken and fish that my body and my stomach was taking more time to process it. And it was adding up to the lethargy and the lack of awareness and focus that I always wanted to remain in. And that state of ease and pleasantness that I wanted to manifest. And uh, I was able to manifest the peace and pleasantness much more easier when I had vegetables and fruits instead of meat. Sattvic food. Sattvic food. And that's when I decided, uh, Let's quit eating meat. And I, uh, I'm a firm person when I make a choice. So I made the choice that day. Since then, it was in 2015. I also wrote a big Quora article uh, summing up my thoughts and what occurred to me and why I've changed that way. 
uh it still is there read by more than 50000 people 100000 people or what not i do not know so then uh, i quit eating meat i uh, told myself money is not everything and that realization had already stuck is this the swami vivekananda effect yes also to a large extent uh, money need not be the driving factor of the action that i perform i keep moving forward and onward and do my best and accept what happens so like one one second bro let's dial back a little bit i'll tell you why because everything you're saying comes from spiritual places like so many of the books here are spiritual and they say the same things that you're saying right now very few books that i have read speak about swami vivekananda in detail which is why i'm constantly nudging you to talk about that topic because i want to learn yes, like absolutely you know me and now as person we work together as well so Correct. i think we know each other to a certain degree at least of course what do you think i can gain from reading about and the works of swami vivekananda see if you read the letters of swami vivekananda you will understand the tone the context and the theme of the conversation he is trying to have with his disciples and people who followed him right so uh, he always wanted to create a world and be the solution to the problems that were existing whether it was illiteracy whether it was uh, you know cleanliness or whether it was spiritual education and advancement of people which is why he has established uh, you know so many institutions i think the, the ramakrishna vidyalaya uh, which runs across the country with uh, uh, ramakrishna mission friends hundreds of colleges universities where almost uh, all of my family members in the previous generation got educated right so uh, he saw illiteracy as a major thing that is dooming the indian population and keeping them uh, under this large blanket where they are covered by taboos and all this uh, imaginary beliefs and uh, poverty and what not so he went on called the new india to become torch bearers and solve for it and solving for any problem requires utmost dedication and at the same time relentless action keep acting keep motivating draw hundreds and thousands of people in your mission to solve and being untouched by all of that was the one thing that inspired me even when uh, uh, they were about to keep his own name for one of the institutes he said no keep my guruji's name uh, ramakrishna mission i am not the reason for all that i do and nor i do want to have any money in my own bank account so uh, i don't want to handle and be own any of the finances so if you take it from a deeper reality and realization uh, none of us are going to uh, take anything when we leave the earth so even if i have a billion dollars in my bank account it is only valid until i am alive and even if you have the biggest legacy as a tech entrepreneur correct <laughs> so all the knowledge this beauty fame name wealth legacy and all that you create is only valid until you are here so whether money is in my bank account or somebody else's bank account if i am able to perform my duties and do my work in an untouched way and keep moving forward uh, i could make the maximum impact